Hello there YouTube, I am Wheelchair21, and on today's rolling review, we are looking at the highly awaited, highly anticipated Super Mini Pla Tenku Gatai Jet Icarus from Chojin Sentai Jetoman. Anyways, Jetman is one of the most popular Super Sentai series internationally, outside of Bioman, Live Man, and like the original Gorinja and Jaku. There's a few others in there that hit that high note, but like I said, this is one of the original ones that got around on the internet quick enough for fans to enjoy, and it's a good thing that Shout Factory got distribution rights for it, so other fans can now witness it if they haven't seen it already. The basic Super Mini Plot exterior box features a black grayscaled case that showcases some of the promotional art for our actual mechas themselves, which will then be more vibrant on the individual cases for each of your parts that you have to build up since they are a model kit. So on the front here, we have actually Jet Icarus, we have the five individual vehicles, we have the group shot of all of them on the side, and then we have one nice look at our actual uh, Great Garuda, if I got that correct. No, Great Garuda is the other combination with Icarus, but this is Great Icarus, the combination where all five are together. It's actually uh, attributed, or there's a homage to it in Time Ranger, when the Time Flyers all come together and become Gamma Form. And then inside, we actually have our individual boxes. So let's just grab one, since they're all practically the same. On the front here, we actually have stats for each of our individual vehicles. Like we have Jet Hawk, Jet Condor, Jet Owl, Jet Swan, and Jet Swallow. It gives the full length of each of our vehicles, as well as their speeds in mocks. The fastest one is actually Condor. The slowest one is actually Owl. But overall, it's actually a cool thing that I do like about our mecha boxes is that they normally include stats for your mecha. I think there was only one set thus far that omitted it altogether. On the side we have more box art, cool little promotional stuff, and then this side here is more attributed to the original deluxe Sentai uh, mecha counterpart here. So obviously when we get Garuda soon it'll have a similar box art matching the Garuda box as well as the fact that it shows the Full length of Jet Icarus and Icarus Hawken. Okay, that's what I always forget. Icarus Hawken, it gives their entire stats here on the little side under the Super Mini Plot logo for anyone interested. So, I do gotta say, it's gonna be great assembling these. It'll only take me about a day or two to build, but for people watching this review, it'll be like a quick transition. All right, it has been a few days since I said that, hey, it's here, look at the box, and now we have it finally assembled. Yes, it is our Super Mini Plot. Jet Icarus. As you can see, we have all five pieces of the jet machines laid out for you, and we have from left to right, Condol, Owl, Hawk, Swallow, and we have Swan. Now, we know it is called Condor, however, because of romanization, they actually left the R to L, and yeah, even though it is Condor, it is Condol, yada, 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 semantics. So, let's go and look at each of our individual vehicles at hand. Starting off is Jet Hawk. It is a nice boxy torso, mostly, because of just the overall cubicle shape of its main uh, jet area. You can tell, like I said, it is the chest, where we see the nice gold-painted actual breastplate. Now, like, most of this is stickers for the upper area here, for the bird eye, for the little panel here, for all this white area here, as well as even your tail fin. It's kind of annoying, and it's kind of a nuisance, but overall, like, what does stand out is the actual way that it nicely creases and folds over the brim of your actual bird head for the jet, as well as the clear core uh, cockpit shell. So that's one good thing. The only knock, though, is a lot of people are saying, even in Japan and here getting them, is that the factories have nicked some of these up. So mine has one, like, right here, a small smidgen of a nick on the paint job. However, others all over the place say that they have, like, huge scratches, huge nicks, huge dings in the main paint scheme, which look unsettling. Like, some areas are the edges, though, that seem to not get fully hit by the airbrush. That's not a big deal, but people are saying the main core of the breastplate that you see head-on has, like, just been just destroyed. Now, to transform it into Icarus Hawken, which we will start doing the transformation for, just for time constraint... You just got to fold in mostly its actual uh, fins and wings. It's a rather simple move from just going 
in and out and just rotating. It's actually a really smart engineering system, similar to the original deluxe toy. So it's really good. It's really simple. And I really do enjoy it, which is also good enough because the way that they have it built is not like the, I think, actual toy where I think the head like kind of pops out. It actually just unfolds and we have a nice pre-painted face. Most of this is paint on the front. Uh, the back is left bare bones. We have a nice little doohickey sticking out of the back of the head, which is actually to help uh, modelers not lose the head when picking it up, as well as there's supposed to be like a little hazardous thing to make sure kids don't try to shove it in their mouths or up their noses. But, you, you know, kids do strange and weird things. But overall, when we have it complete, you'll see it looks really epic with the golden paint scheme and the nice pre-painted face. However, we want to just convert it over to Hawken mode. So we're going to flip and fold, flip and fold, fold the head back in. And we're practically done for this portion right now. So we'll go over to our next limb and start the conversion of just looking at it, talking about it, and getting it ready for at least the first combined mode. We now come to the first limb, and we're going to look at the right leg, which is Jet Condor, or Jet Condol, as I mentioned. And honestly, it is probably one of of my favorite limbs in the overall mecha. It's my favorite of the two legs. Not just because I like Guy or Black Condor, but because I overly like how they were able to do a nice and simple black and white with a red highlight color scheme for our jet compared to Jet Swan being a near resemblance of a black and white with pink stripes for it. Like, honestly, the only difference in the two mechas are their actual heads and color schemes. They both have yellow eyes. They both have like the smoke black uh, clear plastic for their cockpit piece. And you also have the actual ways that the wings sort of at least collapse inwards onto the upper thigh area, but overall uh, their wing shapes are different. I wouldn't say that these are actual thighs since the thighs are actually where the thrusters are. They slide out on a nice engineering slide system that locks in with the wings. But overall, uh, I do got to say for the calf area, I think Black's wings look a lot nicer than Swan's wings. And overall, I've just never been a fan of the overall Swan head for our mecha. Uh, people are sw probably wondering what's the deal with the left eye being inwards more than the right eye. It's all about how it like collapses and folds in on the part that makes the eye. Sometimes it gets over too much. Sometimes it gets over... On the other side, sometimes it just stays right in the middle. It's all about just assembly, and it's kind of a hassle. Not many people can, uh, I guess you would say, maximize which way it's going to really go, honestly. So, the way that these work for becoming your actual feet or the back end of Icarus Hawken is pretty similar to how they do it in the show, with one major difference. Uh, that being that the locking mechanism that will become our ankle, where like on the show it does like a Z-like shape when turning into its uh, feature, you actually have to pull this cod piece out. This here is actually your interior thruster for either the heel or when you fold it over. And what you'll end up doing is you'll be fold over the actual ankle joint, plug it in, and then you'll lock in the mechanism here on these teeth inwards. Now, when you pull out the thighs later, these pegs will actually lock into these system ports here so they're stabilized and don't slide in and out. But for now, you just fold up your wings you fold them in, lock them in place, you'll hear the clip, you fold down actually the red area here, and you're practically done. All I gotta do actually is just flip over the head and slide in his actual thruster, and then do the same for swans. Like that's really a simple transformation when you look at this. It does get kind of tedious because you gotta remember each of the actual steps. Then once you have it locked down, you just swivel and turn, I guess you would say this little blue area, which I guess becomes the second cockpit, cockpit piece for <laughs> your actual Icarus Hawken. And then you just repeat with Swan, just folding in her wings, folding down her red tail piece. And then you got to pull out the ankle joint, pull out this part here, flip the head down. And then you just got to slide in your, I guess you would say heel or back cover or thruster. And then just lock in your foot to your calf area. Then once you have them locked into place, you just kind of peg them in together, and then you just got to properly align them onto your hips. Now, because of how the hips can sometimes move and rotate, it's just easier to take them out of the socket, plug them in, 
and make it one easy transition. So you don't have to worry about fiddling and caressing each thigh and hip back into the place. And then we can sort of move on to our next phase, which are your arms. All right, starting with our arms, we're going to look at Jet Owl. Yes, Yellow Owl's Mecha. Now, with the actual design, it actually is a nice little limb. You actually can tell it looks like an owl with the actual face. It's actually pre-painted for most of the front part here and the back shoulder areas. They're a nice dark marigold mustard yellow. And you can easily tell, though, that the base yellow is a lot brighter due to just not even looking at Jet Hawk's beak, but the actual wrist portion where you'll actually be sticking in your hands later, as well as it's a part of a connector piece to our overall Hawken. Now, since these are the arms, they're a little bit more simplified with the overall actual mechanics on how to transform them. You just have to take off Owl's actual uh, wings here from the bottom piece that plug into the actual shoulder joint. You then fold up its actual head, and then you just want to pop out the wrist portion. Now, this can be rather tight, but you can sort of pick it out with your either with your fingers, or you can just use the actual... Uh, hands or they just slide right out real nice this gray area right here actually is a cover piece so what it'll do is it'll unfold and actually slide out to cover up this opened area here when it becomes your actual uh, hawken area so it's a nice way to keep it more uh triangular during the convergence now actually blue swallow is probably my favorite of the limbs overall it is just a nice elegant color of blue and I do love the fact that her wings fly off to not just act like a boomerang-esque weapon, but pretty much are also doubled as the shield, which we'll talk about in a minute after we look at Hawken. So we also have the fact that this wonderful baby is really badass, really blue, and honestly, it is just the same kind of transformation sequence as Yellow Owl's. But overall, you just got to do a little bit of caressing the same way, popping out the joints here, and then unfolding the cover here. That doesn't want to unfold for me. I'm trying to figure out why is it stuck all of a sudden. Okay, here we go. And with that, we can easily just fold it up and onto our actual mecha. And now we finally have our Icarus Hawken, which is the first combination and configuration for all five jet machines. Now, honestly, I've always loved this form. And one of the reasons why is due to, I guess you would say, uh, retroactively loving it due to it being homaged in Time Ranger with Time Robo Gamma. Uh, when I grew up, I really did love the Gamma formation of Time Robo, which was just, I forget, just the third mode in t Time Force. I forget what it was actually called in Time Force. I just always remember it as Gamma from Time Ranger a lot better. And eventually then when I saw Jetman a couple of years later, probably like, three or five years later after Time Ranger aired, or should I say Time Force aired in America, I saw Jetman, and I just fell in love with this formation. It's really cool and unique how the limbs fold up and link together in the back end of a thruster on to, to your torso, and they just become like a super pyramid, like collider kind of jet bomber thing. Its final attack being the Jet Phoenix is a really badass finishing move, and overall, I think this is one half the SOB. If I had a Tamashi stage, I think it would require a mechanics brand of the effect stages due to the fact that this is rather uh, weighty just due to the fact that we have all the limbs clipped into the rear end and it is hankering it down quite a bit. Hell, if you had a Trident stage, it would probably take two of the basic Tamashi arms just to keep it afloat. It does have a little bit of a weird engineering and hollowness towards the back end, at least with the arms. But overall, it feels like a sturdy combination due to how the mechanics and engineering are applied for the mini plot and how they peg in to your actual legs as well as your overall uh, front area for Jet Hawk. So I think this is a really sturdy combination, but the only thing that you have to worry about are the little heel pieces slash cod pieces of Condor and Swan just untabbing from now and again. But overall, I think people will love this form and then again we don't even have jet garuda yet to combine with this to make it an even bigger and heftier mf -er. so i'm gonna go and transform this off camera to turn it into our jet icarus however in that time you guys can 
look at the weapons. All right, and here we have our actual weapons for our Super Mini Pla Jet Icarus from Jetman. Now, there are a wide variety of weapons here, as one can see. First off, we have the base Birdonic Saber. This is the base sword that is used throughout most of the series to deliver the finishing blow. However, besides having this badass sword and awesome shield from Jet Swallow, we do have the other weapons that the original toy had, as well as the in-show character used. We have our Icarus Axe. Now, this axe is actually kind of interesting due to the fact that it is the weapon that actually Icarus used in the Super Sentai World crossover special, which was an actual amusement park, like, th I guess you would say it's like a 4D experience slash theater ride, where you pretty much just get set in an auditorium and you watch crazy stuff happen. Then you have the actual Icarus Crusher. Now, the Icarus Crusher is badass because it's a ball and chain mace, which is very similar to the G Crusher from Mobile Suit Gundam. I love this weapon a lot and actually display it with it quite often since building it. Then we have the actual Icarus Magnum. The Icarus Magnum is a pretty cool little mallet slash hammer, which looks like it should have a little bit of a thruster jet that comes out of it to give an extra actual oomph or impact to your opponent or monster that you're trying to defeat. It does have this nice red stripe throughout it, which is actually a sticker if you look closely underneath. There's like a little bit of a tab here when you actually wrap around and reach over. It does suck though that the actual item in show only has the one stripe because it would look a lot better having both stickered in or painted in just in general, honestly. Then we have our actual Jet Lance. The Jet Lance is actually interesting due to the fact that it's a giant Asian spear. However, it also is the storage device for both of the Jet Daggers. In the show, usually Icarus would just throw them as throwing knives, rarely would use them as melee weapons, as well as it was rarely seen attached to your actual staff slash lance in the overall show. It's one of those ones where I think they just made it so kids didn't necessarily lose the items. However, that isn't the case, seeing that so many of the actual deluxe Jet Icaruses on the secondary market are missing either these weapons or, you know, individual parts like the actual wings here. Speaking of wings, we also have to talk about yellow owls, or should I say jet owls, wings themselves. Now, in the show, they just flew off and did absolutely effing nothing once the machine combined with the other mechs to make Jet Icarus. However, you can still attach it on the actual forearms, like you can the shield. So, I kind of just say it's the wing blaster. Maybe it's supposed to be like a weapon that they hold like this, similar to the Mega Wingers launcher. Maybe you could just mount it to the arm. Who effing knows? But overall, it just kind of does nothing, but can be used in the toy line, at least for your Super Mini Pla. Now, running down the weapons gave me enough time to switch Hawken to Jet Icarus, which is our little badass warrior. Honestly, I gotta say, with the name like Icarus, I'm guessing it has to deal a lot with Greek mythology, obviously, and you can sort of see it, sort of, with maybe how he's supposed to be like a very kind of stocky little badass cute robot. Maybe that's kind of the case. Maybe it's kind of running off the Kid Icarus high with Nintendo. Who really effing knows? But I really do love a lot of the aesthetic to the overall mecha. I like the ways that they're able to incorporate a lot of the actual uh, Senshi's colors into the limbs. Where we have White Swan at least being a little bit caressed with her, I guess you would say, uh, pink stripes. So you know it's her. You have Condor where he's just pure black, but they give you a little bit of nice hyphenated reds. So it kind of goes with the color motif there. You have Yellow Owls and you have Blue Swallow. And it just looks really nice overall for your entire paint scheme. The back looks really decent, fairly decent. Uh, not a lot of detail. A little bit of hollowness, at least with your legs. You have the nice little thruster stickers here in the back which stand out a little bit better now, not being collapsed and overshadowed by your actual calf areas. But you can see a little bit of it being kind of bare bones compared to the actual suit, where there was a little bit more detail, at least, with your mecha. But that's not what we really care about. We only care about the front side, mostly. So overall, it does look pretty damn awesome. For its points of articulation, it is pretty numerous. Uh, some of it is a little bit harder to show on camera, due to the fact that this... Miniplaz Engineering has some of the tightest joints 
I've had to date. So first off, we have our ankle, which actually works pretty well. Uh, if, as long as you have it locked in place, it's not going to fall over the place. It's like a little loose, though, because it's on a peg and a ball joint. But as long as you keep the joint just attached in the overall foot, you won't get too wobbly. It won't go all over the place. You won't lose traction, and it won't just, like, collapse and fall under its own weight. You have a knee joint, which is really good. There is a bit of a double joint, but it can end up breaking the entire actual hinge that it slides up and down on. So don't force it too much. Keep it on your single joint, but it still has a nice wide range of motion. It feels almost realistic compared to other mini plus sets we've had in the past, at least. So it doesn't seem too abnormal, at least. But overall, you still have a nice wide range here. The way that the actual uh, crotch works on a ball jointed butterfly system is really good. However, the small little pistons in here are rather tight. And I do fear that they could snap and break on some people. So don't really force on your hips too much. And just try to be more of a display piece than an overall action figure like the base retail mini plow lines are. There is no real waist joint in this. You kind of just have to run off of the circular motion of the hips themselves to give you a bit of a, a sway and swerve to make it somewhat able to have a motion there but overall it's not if it was it would be like this silver bar right here since i was watching jetman this morning most of the waist is actually built as an actual working waist for the man in suit uh with your elbow joint you actually have that however some of them are stressing on some people's mine has one in the right limb mine does not have a stress joint on the actual left limb so uh, luckily the way that it folds up it compartmentalizes real well so even though this extrudes out on the elbow, it slides right back into the upper bicep. So it's one nice solid piece. I really like how that works. So it actually fi uh, fills out some hollow areas. You also get like a bit of an added wrist joint due to how it locks in for Hawken mode. And the shoulders, they do flip out. There is a bit of a push on the shoulders, so they might pop off. So they will actually have a bit of a hinge inside your overall. Uh, Jet Hawk has a hinge here, so it swings out. You do have the ability to swing up. However, my blue is tighter than my yellow, so at least that gives you a bit of an idea of what can go on. But overall, it does, like I say, have a few flaws, but most of it's only having nice and tight engineering joints, which can maybe snap and or damage the overall figure. So probably disassemble some parts, sand it down, make it a little bit easier to be smoother, uh, have a smoother glide and a application to itself. So it doesn't seem like it's going to destroy its overall uh, system and or figures. Because honestly, I'm putting a, quite a bit of pressure just on blue alone. And I've already sanded it like four times. So that is possibly a problem for some, not all. But overall, I think it has a nice, slender, boxy, cute, adorable feature that all will love, especially those who love Jetman. So... For a final evaluation, the Super Mini Plot Jet Icarus set is actually really good for if you're a actual Jetman fan, if you want the original mecha in some shape or form, due to the fact that this mecha alone goes for 150 to 320, and that's just all by does it have the box? Has it been used? Has it been opened? Is it still sealed? Does it have all the parts? So on and so forth. So to get the mini plot at around like $60 max. And that's even before or with shipping. You got a pretty definitive nice deal right here. Which is almost the same price as the original toy at retail. But due to the fact that this is a nice uh, high intricate model kit in this modern age. Is also cool nevertheless. Due to the fact that we do have a lot of awesome points of articulation. Now due to the fact that the uh, actual I guess you would say engineering of the model kit and figure itself. And the overall, I guess you would say, tight torque of the parts and assembly. I do want to give out notice for those who haven't built theirs yet. That you will need to possibly sand some parts to make it smoother to not just assemble it. But to overly like pose your figure once it's been assembled. If you're just keeping them in the basic jets or Icarus Hawking, you're not going to have that much of a problem. However, once you start messing around with Icarus himself... You might find issues with either the ankles. You might find issues with the actual crotch and hips. You might have issues with your elbows and your shoulders like I do. So that can be rather annoying. However, once you get freaking Jet Garuda, this thing is going to get even bigger and bulkier. 
whether it's in the Hawken form or whether it is as Great Icarus. So overall, I think there's a lot of playability and display purposes within this alone since you have all of the vicarious weapons to use throughout the show as you hear the clink and clanging of me just getting the crusher out. I mean, you have quite a plethora of weapons, and it's also good that now we have three-fifths of the original Super Sentai World special, so with this, you can display him with Daijujin, you can also display, display him with Me Muteki Shogun, and hopefully one day we'll have, you know, five Robo, and we'll also have freaking Dairano to complete all five. So overall, this set is still... Uh, available at most retailers in Japan and online hobby stores, as well as I think it might be getting distributed here in North America through Bandai, like most of the other Super Mini Plot kits. So you'll be able to find them on Amazon's Big Bad Toy Store and in Barnes and Noble. So overall, you have quite a few ways to get this set. And I think as long as you love Jetman or as long as you love building model kits of Sentai Robos, you'll enjoy having this. And so with that, I gotta say it's good to have to finally have a version of this in my collection it's great to have had assembled it even though there are some finicky parts to it and i think overall you'll just enjoy it as long as you keep it as a display piece rather than an overall toy so i digress if you love it please leave a like leave a comment and subscribe if you at least enjoyed my review here on my channel wheelchair 21 as well as you can check me out on twitter facebook and instagram and you can check out my website heroclub.com Anyways, I'll see you all next time with another Rolling Review and or Doyle's DVDs.